Okay, praise the Lord. Welcome to our daily bread. You are right on time. We gave you two minutes to pray before we arrived. Anyway, welcome to Daily Bread. Thanks for being with us. The Lord bless you. We ask Holy Spirit to come and minister to us today and to touch lives and touch hearts. May the Lord encourage you. May the Lord bless you. And may the Lord strengthen you in all that you do. We are uh, talking about decision making for our daily bread. And <clears throat> I'm going to stay on that for probably quite some time. Uh, I spent some time in the Word yesterday preparing I probably will alter my message some today, but ultimately I want to stay with the theme of decision-making, uh, the importance of turning daily decisions into the best results. Six steps that are very practical, but at the same time have a spiritual foundation that lead to what we call a pot of gold, a good decision. And how many of you know a good decision is prosperous? It, it's based on the Word of God. It's led by Holy Spirit, and it brings glory to God. I've made the comment in the past, your daily decisions determine your destiny. And so during this season when the enemy is really attacking the body of Christ, attacking all over the world actually, and attacking the minds, it's very important that we have very good uh, principles to practice to make good decisions. Today, uh, we know that in the world, a lot of things are overwhelming. And so when you, when people get overloaded, with demands, with distractions, with situations all around our lives. Decision-making can be quite difficult, and one bad decision can cost us a lot. It costs a lot of time, costs a lot of money, cost in relationships, could affect you the rest of your life. So we want to make decisions that line up with the Word of God and are led by the Spirit. The younger you are, the more critical good choices become. So hopefully... Those of you watching on Daily Bread will share it with younger generations. Younger generations watching us on Daily Bread will share it with your peers. And uh, let's all grow together and go together uh, in the Lord. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I wanted to uh, back up a little bit to our last Daily Bread. So if you would bear with me just a moment. Uh, I gave a story last time in Daily Bread, a testimony, a true story, uh, related to a blizzard when one of my sons was born, my second son. <clears throat> and it was a very, very demanding time, wind chills 50 plus uh, below zero. And uh, we had snow drifts 15 feet high in throughout the Midwest. And we lived in Illinois at the time. The governor declared a state of emergency National Guard was called out. You couldn't go uh, on any of the highways, interstates, etc. I gave a testimony, and if you were not able to watch it, um, I would encourage you to go online and watch last week's uh, decision-making class. And I gave a story about the cattle. And in this horrific storm that was very blinding, and very challenging for many days, if not into weeks. But the first, the next three to five days were very crucial. And we had a lot of cattle. So <clears throat> those cattle were standing on top of the well, uh, hundreds of them. Now, the well on that farm was a coal mine shaft, eight feet by eight feet. And if I remember correctly, 800 feet deep before it went horizontal with the surface of the earth. We have no idea how far that old coal mine went horizontally. So the cattle were in a dangerous situation. They knew the water was there. There were huge concrete tanks, troughs, 40, 50 feet long, four of them, I think, going in four directions. So they knew where the water was, but they couldn't get to it. And it was trampled with snow and it was 15 feet deep packed. So I had to drive those cattle away with a shovel and get it gated to clean it out. I was giving a testimony that in many ways I feel like uh, right now pastoring is a lot like having that shovel. I didn't really expound on it a lot. I just threw it out there in light of some of the text where we were in the scripture talking about decision making. And some people 
texted leaders, pastors, asking me to clarify, which I was hoping they would do. So sometimes, you know, you throw things out there. Jesus did. And when the crowds were gone or when there was opportunity, his disciples would ask him questions. Those are some of the greatest opportunities to learn that there are, to discuss what you're talking about. Uh, 16 years ago, almost 17, Pastor Bobby and Martha came. Brother Johnny was here. Uh, Brother Johnny would spend time with Pastor Bobby and Pastor Martha. And he would just visit and explain. And we wanted them to feel comfortable and feel like family because they are. And uh, Johnny told Pastor Bobby something like this. Now, you'll be going along with him and he'll tell you about cows or horses or tractors or motors. You won't have a clue what he's talking about. But eventually, you'll understand. Eventually, he'll explain something or you'll ask questions. You'll understand eventually. He's teaching you something. Jesus would do that to his disciples, and he still does it for us. I wasn't trying to be rude or... uh, I was just using an example that I could learn through and maybe teach through over time and understand. Of course, Pastor Bobby and Pastor Martha are great pastors, and we love having them here. So I want to read a text. I want to share some interaction with you today related to that daily bread and that story and how I see some of where we are right now kind of related to that story. So good morning, Pastor. We're okay, right, Gary? Thank you. Thank you for doing the teaching on (laughs) good decision-making. Wow. Wow. Before we go too far, let's pray. I ask you to come, Holy Spirit, and touch everyone within the sound of our voice. Wherever people are listening, wherever people are hungry, wherever they have a need today, that you would touch them in a special way. I would say to you prophetically, that today is a miracle day. Today is a supernatural day. For us, historically, we've seen many miracles in the month of May. I prayed through most of the night. I slept very little, and my day so far has been very demanding but good. I think today I've seen no less than four major miracles in different areas and categories financial, healing, relational, and others. So as we progress, we just grab a hold by faith that this is a miracle day and begin to confess that. And we ask Holy Spirit to just minister to you right now. This pastor says, we have never seen so many people making so many bad decisions. And we have been working on helping many out of the consequences of those decisions. So again, I want to thank you for very practical and very timely teaching from the Word. So before I continue on, I just want to add, Lib, here now, is that the enemy is really, uh, during COVID and all that's involved with this, attacking the mind. So research in the past, if I remember correctly, professionals in the field of mental health are reporting they think 51% of the population in America has emotional, uh, mental issues, challenges related to this season. Now, I would agree with that. And I don't think that it's any different in the body of Christ as it is in the world for those that don't know Christ. So we are in a season where the mind is under attack, the soul. And so we pray Romans 12, 1, and we want to believe God to have the mind of Christ. And I want to uh, highlight the importance for all of us as believers to stay connected to the Word of God and stay connected to your church families. It's very dangerous Jesus knew what he was doing when he gave fivefold ministry to the body of Christ. Knowing the Holy Spirit would come when he had resurrected and ascended to be with the Father. 
but also knowing that he would give gifts to the body of Christ, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to help equip the body of Christ, to teach them to walk in God's love. Ephesians chapter um, uh, 4, 5, well, and even moving into 6, how we do warfare. So God designed, Jesus designed that those ministry gifts would represent him because we need flesh and blood. We need contact. We need relationship. So those ministries represent him to let other voices replace the voice of the leaders God put in your life and your local church family is very dangerous to try to minister apart from being connected to your church family is risky and dangerous you could very easily step into doing things that you're not qualified to do or you're not trained to do or called to do so let's be wise in this season and don't let other voices, especially voices that communicate division and error, avoid those voices. Don't use that material in your social media and become one who spreads lies or spreads heresy or spreads division. So I want, I'm encouraging you, everybody from here all the way around the world. So don't be offended. It's a sin to be offended. It's, it, or ignorance. You don't know that it's a sin. So you, you can be offended and not know it's a sin, which is ignorance. You could be offended knowing it's a sin. And so repentance is ever so valuable. So uh, Pastor Bobby, I'm pretty sure was here, and Pastor Jana when I was on Zoom with the, with the apostles in Russia. And this is a major problem there, as well as in other nations where we've been on Zoom and where we've talked to leaders, where members of the body of Christ are listening to lots of voices that are full of error, prophetic words that they have no authority over their lives. They're not accountable to anyone. The word is not being judged by people in authority in the body of Christ to know whether it's accurate or not. And a lot of people in the church have let those voices Replace the voices of leadership God put in your church family. Now, folks, that's dangerous. God didn't put fivefold ministry in the church to be dictators. We, of course, would never succumb to that or teach that. They're here to love you, to represent Christ and minister you the way Christ did. So if we don't continue to apply these principles, folks, I've got news for you. You're going to be in a horrible place for decision making. You're listening to the wrong voices. And most of the time you can tell what, what's the spirit through discernment of spirits. What spirit is this? Does it release fear or does it release faith? Does it give you direction with redemptive qualities or leave you confused and unknown? So folks, please listen to those guidelines, simple, basic guidelines, and just examine your own heart. Let the Lord reveal your heart to you. No one knows their heart. We don't even know our own heart. Only the Lord does. So am I confused? Am I bringing division to family, loved ones, church family, leadership? Or does what I'm hearing have redemptive qualities in it, bringing people to Christ, contributing to unity and strength? So let's, let's take time to look at our own lives here, for folks. All right, so I continue to read this text. So the reason for my text is related to the, your teaching about the cattle and having to beat them away from the water, understanding that they're on top of a coal mine shaft, on top of a well house, on top of the electric wires, <laughs> and uh, the, the lid is only made out of two by fours that covers all this, uh, two by fours, two by sixes, and metal. So the whole thing could collapse. So you have to drive them away from the water. He says, I understand the storyline, but not the application for it at this time. And that's what I was hoping to do. Create curiosity. Why would he tell us that story now? How does this apply? Okay, so what I've been saying so far is to help clarify the story, which is a true testimony. All right, 
It was three horrific days of night and day work in sub-zero temperatures uh, to solve this problem. Your statement about the next six, six weeks being critical, can you expound on that at this time? Okay, so my answer was this, only but text, which is a little bit risky, but I didn't have time for conversation at this time. I haven't had time for conversation since this. I said, well, kind of a simple version is this. Number one, these are mystery months. So the Lord was speaking to us months ago that uh, March, April, May, and June would be mystery months, that there would be a lot to discover, that we would find as leaders as well as congregation, it's a lot like driving in the fog. So here in the Midwest, we have fog quite periodically, quite often through the fall or especially the winter and sometimes even in early spring. And that fog can be so thick that you can barely see past your car. So we have to learn in fog to slow down. Do not outdrive your headlights by night. Don't outdrive what you can see by day because anything could pop up in that fog. So spiritually, it's sort of like driving in a fog. Don't go too fast. Be certain of where you're at and what you're doing. Number two, in longing to get back to something don't bypass the altar and don't bypass looking forward. So uh, let's prepare our heart to do right, live right, and be holy. So I want to say that again. Number two, in relationship to the story, in longing to get back to something. And a lot of people, those cattle wanted to drink. A lot of people want to experience the manifest presence of God, the manifestations of the Spirit which are wonderful, but even in a 26-year in a, uh, move of the Spirit where we had a visitation to habitation, even in the early days when the souls and the miracles and maybe the whole congregation fall out, just all kinds of things happened. We never sought the manifestations. We sought the Lord, and I was always trying to get the people, seek God, seek God, seek God. Don't seek a manifestation. You, you'll experience different manifestations, but let the touch of God change you to become more like Jesus. So after having been in the presence of God, what we call maybe the glory of God, which the glory of God is nothing greater than God, it's the, that manifest presence of the Lord. We see examples of it all through the Word of God. Acts chapter 2 on Pentecost, Acts chapter 10 in Cornelius' life in Caesarea, uh, and Joppa, and how God moved in Peter and Cornelius, and we see it in Paul's life in Acts chapter 9 when he had an encounter with Christ and fell to the earth as though he were dead, and came up blind, but yet was filled with the Holy Spirit, was healed, and began his ministry. Or in Revelation 1 with John the Revelator, <clears throat> he has a revelation of Jesus, and falls to the earth as though he were a dead man. So, a lot of people, uh, COVID changed things, pandemic situation changed things throughout the world. And so we're trying to get the people, look ahead, don't look at what you can't do, look at what you can. Let heaven give you strategies now. Stay in relationship with God, stay in relationship with one another, but the way we do things have to change a little. So we don't want to go rushing backwards, we want to move forward. But we can't move forward in God without an altar. So the last mm, four to six weeks as I've been working with pastors, Pastor Bobby and Pastor Gary have ministered. Um, I think both of them, these three or four times, were in my absence. But the result was people were coming to the altars without virtually no effort to invite people to the altar. They were coming. People were weeping and on their face in the sanctuary people up in even a sound booth, which is not even in this room. It's where they run everything electronically to reach people, sobbing, weeping, hardly able to function. Now, you may be already experiencing some of these manifestations. Some of you may not. Now, so let's not get jealous. Let's not get envious. Let's not look at that negatively. We are all in different regions, in different situations. But God is on the move, and God is moving and will continue to move very, very powerfully. So 
I'm going to go back to the text message. In longing to get back to something, don't bypass the altar and don't bypass looking forward. So it's time to prepare hearts to do right, live right, be holy. The cows wanted water no matter what, and they wanted it now. All over the world and in the church, there's not a lot of fruit of the Spirit. There's not a lot of patience. There's not a lot of long-suffering. There's, there's, there's a lack. People are agitated in the spirit realm, anger, violence, rebellion. These are the things we're warring against, and they can work themselves into our, our lives, into our own heart. So people want things now. They want it the way they wanted it now. And not really given to good biblical reason. Not really thinking things through. Judging their own heart. Looking at the cause and effect. What kind of effect is my action causing me now? So as we look at the fruit, is it biblical or not? And folks, looking at that fruit is a better indicator than what we may think or how we may feel. What's the fruit in our lives? Is there unity? Is there love? Is there mercy? Is there healing? Is there deliverance? Or are other things happening that are contrary to that, okay? So they want it now with no patience, even if it's dangerous. So how many of you know, you don't just run into the glory of God and the presence of the Lord without a changed heart. You don't just keep coming to the line for prayer and falling out in the spirit and never change and continue to walk in sin, it will find you out. Nothing stays hidden in the glory. So without a repentant heart, we're headed for problems. Did that, does this sound logical? I mean, it's that you could understand what I'm saying, right? Because I don't have any notes here. I'm just uh, sharing my heart. So many want, number three, so many want a move of God, a presence of glory, they want it now. But glory best is received with a pure, repentant heart. Number four, too many are throwing safety to the wind. You are asking good questions. Okay, very good, Pastor. That's good for chewing, and I thank you. And I shared this, a topic that I think is fit for now, timely. I think I shared this with Pastor Bobby last night. I think I asked Jana and Linda to write this down for future. But uh, this topic, the glory of purification fire. Listen, I'm expecting incredible moves of the Spirit, incredible moves of glory. Now, our pastors, several, uh, see, there are f three of them here today with us. Several are on the road. But uh, I've been telling them that I've been praying for sovereign moves of the Spirit, where the Holy Spirit just shows up, where Holy Spirit's moving, where we're not, we're not trying to, to do anything but facilitate what He's doing. So the prophetic words have been rich. People have been weeping. People have been coming to the altar. Last Sunday, uh, at least one young man just fell out standing up here. So we have to be wise just inviting people to come up. <laughs> and we're going to have to be very observant because these are only forerunners of some of the things that I expect to be happening and expect to happen. So... Um, uh, we will pray into that more, Pastor. Thank you. God has been moving very powerfully here, and their church is growing. They need to do something again soon in terms of facility and enabling everyone to be there. They'll probably have to go to double services. They need more room. Good problem to have. I'm reading the, his text, this pastor's, these pastors' texts, uh, man and woman, husband and wife. But we are facing some major decisions and want this to be right. We're moving slowly and have been for some time, and people are coming in. So, yes, it, see, people may want to say to you as a leader, well, you're resisting God, and we should be doing this and this and this. No, this is a time to be persistent and persevere like an oxen, to keep a safe environment, and to give people opportunity. As we move to the minister's gathering leadership conference in August, it will be online. More information on that later on, on whcc.net. Um, but, but building an altar and just seeing people come to God 
is very important right now. Now, in the midst of that, we'll see a lot of moves of the Spirit. Uh, and so we're moving slowly. We have been for some time, and they are coming in. So when I said, in many ways, I feel like that farmer in 1977 beating those cattle away. 1979 in February, beating those cattle away. That means that, well, shouldn't we want the presence of God? Yes. Shouldn't we want the glory? Yes. Shouldn't leaders want this? Yes. But slow down. <laughs> slow down. And be led by the Spirit and ease into this, letting God do what God wants to do as hearts are prepared. Okay, so I, I plan on having Pastor Bobby and Pastor Gary minister more in the near future. And even Sunday night, we had an awesome move of God. And, uh, I think Pastor uh, was telling me that he fell out Sunday night during the service, couldn't even function, was very broken. Uh, I've been praying into Luke chapter 2. You want, might want to watch his services on Sunday related to uh, trusting God. And last Sunday, well, I changed the service. There were many prophetic words that Pastor Eric was going to preach, but we, we put that on hold for a little bit. I felt like I should be laying a foundation for what's coming in the realm of the Spirit. And uh, been, I've been praying into Luke chapter 2, verse 9, how the glory, new covenant, different than Old Testament, and it surrounded the shepherds. They were in it suddenly. They didn't have to do anything to get in. They didn't have to do anything to prepare. It, it, it Welcome to new covenant in Christ. As that archangel introduced the shepherds and the world, the message was for all. Uh, it's a salvation message. So that angel, which may very well have been Gabriel, we don't know that, but Gabriel was active in ministry up to that point in Luke chapter 1 as well as Matthew 1. Now, um, many, I have many more questions and things to evaluate. We have seen a little ways off, but we haven't discerned yet what all God is showing us, what it truly means yet. And Pastor Fogg is a great use of term for this time, helps me to understand also, we've had many people tell us, now, I agree with this. They've told us that they have been in an emotional or mental-like fog. They haven't been themselves. Now, more and more people are going to realize this. They're going to see that my position, my fruit, is not what it should be. And they're going to begin to realize that other things influenced me, uh, that weren't necessarily of God, that weren't of the Spirit of God, probably a, a demonic spirit. Now, be careful how you receive that. We're not criticizing people. Listen, we're either going to be influenced by the Spirit of God or operate in discernment of spirits and know this is not the Holy Spirit. It's a different spirit. And when we do, we want to move out of that. Listen, all of this is releasing witchcraft within the church family, which is, very, which is a tremendous spirit to oppose uh, they have been in an emotional and mental fog. Now, mind you, this is by their testimony, and I agree with that. Haven't been themselves, unsure of themselves, and a bit cast down. So we want to pastor that with mercy and love and grace and help people uh, to uh, move forward and be healed. So I said, that's true. I believe that what you're describing and what people are confessing is accurate. There's a very large attack on the mind, so pastor them, love them, nurture them, uh, try to do your best. So <clears throat> how do you pastor people? How does a shepherd pastor sheep? They need to hear his voice or her voice. When sheep get beyond the shepherd's voice, they rarely ever can get back, and they need rescued. So uh, try to let your voice be known. Ask God to strengthen you and heal you and protect you from all uh, these demonic attacks, even witchcraft, that you can do your job and do your task. All right, so uh, that's probably enough for now. And I've gone 32 minutes. So we'll close with that. I'm still staying on the topic of decision-making when we come back. And I'll be here for quite some time. And we have a lot to learn. So I hope that clarifies. Now, as you're listening to this, pastors, leaders, folks, Listen, you can email in, right, Aaron? You can send in questions. You can, you can even call the receptions and call them in if you want. Or if you have my number, you can text it. 
I'll try to answer. I hope that brings clarity and hope that brings understanding. Why didn't you just open the gate and let them out to get water? That's also part of the story. Because on the first day, if I'd opened that gate with all, thousands of acres of woods out there, they'd have never come back. They had to be really thirsty and really hungry before I could lead them to water or they would not have followed me back. So to go too soon would have been dangerous. I'd have, I'd have lost them, which would be bankruptcy. So a lot to learn. The Lord bless you. Thanks for your time. We ask Holy Spirit to seal these words in our heart. Thanks a lot. God bless.